first things first, what you're definitely going to need is some good lighting. Now, keep in mind, it's definitely dark in here right now because I didn't turn these lights on and it's super hot in here. So I like to keep the lights off during the day. But for the most part, you're going to want at least two lights. Sometimes I might use one depending on the amount of natural daylight that I have in the apartment. But for the most part, I like to use two lights. One is overhead and one is just a simple soft box. Now, next thing what you're going to want is that you're just you're not necessarily going to need a white background. For me, I actually found this in the trash. I guess somebody was throwing out a desk and this was like the top layer of that desk. And once I seen this, I immediately thought this would be a great background for some photos. So I actually have this, but prior to using this, I was actually using this computer desk. But the problem with using an actual desk, at least for me, was the simple fact that I didn't want to be taking sh photos of shoes in the same place that I work on. So I just wanted to separate those two. But of course, you don't necessarily need a white background. You just want something simple, something clean, something non-distracting. That way the buyer is solely focused on the item that you're trying to present. And having just a simple, plain background can work perfectly, whether you're selling clothing, electronics, shoes whatever it might be whatever you're trying to sell online you definitely just want a simple clean background so for me i like to use something white for the most part sometimes i might even photograph clothing on the uh, on the floor and th like you can see these are dark floors but at the same time it's simple it's non-distracting and it just works out just fine all right y'all so we're going to use these shoes as an example to take some of these photos with and actually grab these from ross so if you guys shop at ross first thing what you always want to make sure that you're doing is that you're removing all of the tags that's in the shoe. Sometimes they might have the price tag, the size tag. They also have some of these uh, these zip ties that I see a lot of people leaving. And to me, I'm not gonna say it's tacky, but for the most part, I just try to remove all of those type of things, just just because it's not it's not important. You know what I mean? You don't want the buyer seeing certain things that they don't necessarily need to see. That's not affecting the shoe. However, when it comes to the actual tags, I always leave the tags on. That way the buyer knows that the shoes are brand new and they were not worn. Now, what I like to always do is just try to tuck away the laces. That way they're not kind of getting in the way as well. And the buyer can just completely see the whole shoe. Also, before I start taking some of these photos, I almost forgot, especially when it comes to Ross and Marshalls, oftentimes you're gonna see some price tags. Sometimes thrift stores also write prices on the bottom. And I like to use certain things to get some of these markers off. Now, this silver marker, you can easily get this off with a, one of these type of erasers. This is just a simple white eraser and it doesn't leave any residue or anything like that. So I usually use this, but you can also use some rubbing alcohol. This is just 70% rubbing alcohol and that gets it off really easy. Easily. and sometimes you might come across like permanent marker or something that's really really tough to get off and anytime I come across something that's giving me a lot of trouble I just go ahead and I use Google to remove any of these type of you know these silver marker stains that that they usually write on the bottom of shoes so that's just three things that you can use one quick note for you guys really quick I'm just using rubbing alcohol to remove the silver marker on the bottom of these but like I said previously you guys can use any of those three materials that I mentioned before and I made sure I put Amazon affiliate links for all of the items that I'm discussing in this video in the description below. Alright y'all, so, so as you guys can see that stain is all gone and now the bottoms look really nice and really clean. So let's start taking some of these photos. Alright y'all, so for me when it comes down to taking photographs of shoes, I like to hit every angle that way the buyer knows exactly what they're getting. And for these particular pairs of shoes, I'm just going to make sure I use 8 photographs. Now if it was a shoe that was very detailed and might have had some scuffs and some scratches, that way I would definitely utilize some more photographs. But for these particular shoes, 8 would definitely suffice. Now one thing to keep in mind is if these shoes were used the bottom of the shoe and getting the back of the shoe to show any heel drag is super important. These are brand new, that's not going to be super important, but I just wanted to let you guys know that because I do sell a lot of new shoes as well. Now the last shoe, which is also super important, is that I always take a photograph of the size tag. This way the buyer knows what size they can get and they can also use a size tag to verify the Now a really important tip that I almost forgot to tell you guys is that I like to use this simple iPhone 6. This is actually just my work phone and what this does for me is that it allows me to simply just airdrop some of these photos to my desktop, to my other laptop and sometimes, oftentimes, I would just list some items simply straight from my phone. So by having it in a work phone, I don't take up a bunch of space on my personal phone and like I said, the photo quality on some of these older cameras are still really really good so for me what i like to do is anytime i'm taking some of these photos especially since i cross list on ebay and on poshmark you want to make sure that this that you're taking square photos that way that that way it can actually fit 
on Poshmark and it can be uploaded smoothly and seamlessly. And of course, when you're taking some of these photos for eBay as well, once it's a square, it, it really doesn't make a difference. It just also allows it to upload really, really easily.